Pastor Elias had, had just referenced here, I mean, we, uh, we, we, can, we come on a, on a Saturday morning for something that, that God has for us. I mean, we can say, well, you know, I, had, I came to church last night, I came Wednesday, I, I read my Bible, I prayed, and, you know, this is my day off, and, you know, I got a clean house, or I got to go do some errands and things, and, but you took the time to come, amen? So give yourself a hand this morning, amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'm beginning to understand as, as a pastor and uh, uh, raising up people and, and, and being committed to this thing to the very end, because your pastor is, uh, both of your pastors, they, they are committed to this to the very end. They've given up a lot of things in life just to start this work and to uh, touch people's lives. Amen. And uh, I, I praise God for, for Pastor Elias and Trish and, and Pastor Samuel. And uh, as he said, I've known them for a little while now. We met actually at a, at a prayer, uh, prayer breakfast, Pastor Bob Camus, remember out in Rancho. And I sat with Pastor, and, and uh, it was just uh, a, a, a common spirit we got together. And we just, just stuck, and he calls me and, and lets me know things, and I call him, and, and we, just, we just begin to develop that friendship, amen. And I consider him one of my pastors in the faith, amen, one of my fathers in the faith, so I, I love him so, and my wife and my church, we, we just love him, and, and uh, thank God for him, amen. Well, I'm going to give you something that I think that you can probably take home this morning, um, and how many know you never hear enough about faith? You can never hear uh, enough about faith, because faith is always happening, always growing, amen. First uh, Thessalonians says that, that uh, Paul, Paul uh, expressed to the, to, the, to the church that your faith groweth exceedingly. Your faith groweth exceedingly. So we all started with a measure of faith at one time. Amen? We, we, it isn't, well, Pastor got some more, Pastor Lee's got some more, and Trish has more, and, and you know, no, no, no. It's, it's all. We all have the same measure of faith, the book of Romans says. So we all started with, with a measure of faith. Say, I have a measure of faith. You have a measure of faith. Now it is what you would do, what you're going to do with it. Amen. And, and in these last times, these last days, how many know we're in the last days? Oh, Jesus is coming very, very soon. Amen. And the days we live in, they are exciting times for us, the believer. Amen. They are, they are, we are recognizing the power that is in the word of God like we've never known before. It's, being, it's coming to revelation, I mean, through men of God, through, through uh, fathers of the faith who are giving understanding. It's like the word last night was just an awesome word about grace. And I started, on the way coming, Pastor, I was just thanking God. And, and, and you know, we started saying, you know, I love you, Jesus. But then I started, Lord, I thank you that you love me. I thank you that you love me. I thank you that you, you lavish me with your love this morning. You love me through your word. And uh, it just opened up a whole new understanding driving here this morning. Uh, but to the believer, this is an exciting time. And uh, uh, we need to take notice of the Lord's return. Amen? We are to be excited about this time. But I'll tell you, for the casual Christian or those who are just walking, walking not the walk, you know. You know how many you can walk, you can talk the talk but not walk the walk, you know. But we, to those kinds of people, say I'm not that kind. Amen. Amen. We, we pray for them, that kind. Amen. Amen. We were probably at that kind at one time. Amen. We're taking it serious now. But for the casual and the carnal Christian, these are dangerous times. These are dangerous times because they don't know how to activate what the Word says. They don't know how to apply what the Word is, is uh, having us to walk in. And it's so easy for, for the carnal Christian, those who ain't dedicated them lives to this, that that. They get, they get trapped by, by the enemy's uh, traps. They get caught by the snares of life. They get caught in, in the thorns of life. And, and things will just come into a time where the, where the enemy will just come in and take you. I've been teaching in my church the past few weeks about knowing your enemy. Knowing your enemy. The enemy comes in three, three ways, the Bible says. He comes, he comes subtle like a serpent. Amen? Just like he did with Eve deceiving, coming in cra with craftiness, sneaking uh, through the media. I'm seeing, we're all seeing this through the media, through entertainment. That word entertainment in, in, in the Greek, in Latin actually, it means to entertain, uh, to, within, to hold from within. 
and the entertainment, it, it gets a hold of your inside. Amen? Because sometimes you can, you know, we all do this. We can watch, we can stand and sit in front of a TV set and just get memorized by what's happening. Amen? We can go to a big screen movie and just get memorized you, and you get entertained because when you, sat, you sit in a movie or, or in, a, 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 in front of a TV, and I'm not against the movies or TV and things, but when you do that, your, your mind is just inactive. You're just soaking up everything that's going on. I mean, you're just like, ugh. And it's just like filling you with information. And people I know that will watch TV for hours and hours and hours, and they're being entertained. They're being entertained. You're being hold, held from within inside. Things are happening on the inside of you. So he comes subtle. He also comes as, as an angel of light, the Bible says. An angel of light. And when Paul was talking about that, he comes as one who is who's a, a, a watering down this gospel message to where you don't really have to do that whole lot. You know, everybody's going to heaven. There's a doctrine going around that everybody's going to heaven. You know that? That we're all saved by grace. It ain't the grace that Pastor Shaman was talking about. There's a, it's talking about a grace that everybody's going to heaven. There's a doctrine going out. And it's being preached strong. And it's being preached by big churches. And men of God, I'm talking about true men of God, generals in the faith that are coming against and preaching against us and actually calling these so-called men of God out as heresy. And, and this is some critical times, but people are just loving it because, you know, there's no commitment involved. They even tell you, well, you don't have to read the book of Galatians anymore because whatever Paul taught and uh, uh, he brings in the Old Testament, that's not due for us today. Uh, the New Testament is all we go by. Uh, whatever Jesus said about the law, we don't have to go by. You see, and that's, that's running rampant in the church right now. Amen? Because when the preacher preaches that type of watered-down gospel, it's because they don't want to offend you or, or the congregation. Because if you go, well, you're offending me, Pastor. You're telling me, you know, not to do this and they, they're because then you leave and then your tithe, the tithe leaves the offering leaves, the people leave in the church. So we're just going to keep you comfortable, not offend you, not make you think about your salvation, and, you know, everything's fine and dandy. You know, that's watered down. That's the angel of light. And the Bible says another third one. This ain't what I'm preaching, though. Amen. It's, it's, it, he comes out like a roaring lion. Roaring. Roaring with things that are, that are just coming out of life, sickness or disease or poverty, is a constant roar at you, constant roaring at you. This is, you're never going to get out of this. You're never going to change. It's a roar that is constantly coming at you. But I've understood that we, the Bible says in Revelation 12, that we overcome the accuser of the brethren by what? The word of our testimony by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony, and not loving our lives to the death. And this is where we're at. And we need to understand this, is that I've been, tell, I've been just preaching to our church about knowing these signs, knowing what's coming in, know what's around us and what's happening in a, and around our lives, in our homes. Amen. But I want you to turn to the book of Proverbs real quick. The book of Proverbs. And as I said, taking this, if you, those of you who take uh, uh, titles for, for your notes, I'm, I'm entitling this, Taking Faith Seriously. Taking Faith Seriously in These Last Days. Amen. And a lot of people, a lot of churches are not staying persistent or staying steadfast in their walk of faith with God. And that's basically their relationship with God. Their relationship with God. Being persistent. In the book of Luke, write this down, Luke 8, 8, 18, or 18, 8, 18, 8, Luke 18, 8. Jesus gave us a story about the persistent widow, about, uh, about going to the unjust judge and constantly telling him to avenge her uh, of this debt. And then he finally says, you know what, I'm going to avenge you, I'm going to let it go. But he says in verse 8, he says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really... Verse 8, will he really find faith on the earth? Is he going to really find faith on the earth? Is he really going to find faith in you and in me? The persistence. He's, talking, he's giving an example about the persistent widow who constantly went to this judge. Constantly. 
If Jesus comes now, is he, is, are you what he's looking for? Am I what he's looking for? The persistent faith. Will he really find faith in you and I? I tell my people all the time, the most important thing in life for a Christian, as a believer in this 2013 that we're in, is to become more spiritual. As a believer in Jesus Christ, and not to become spooky. <laughs> look, to your neighbor, look to your neighbor and say, not spooky. Tell them, don't become weird either. You know, it's not about becoming weird or spooky or, or you know, there's a lot of spooky Christians out there. How many of you have seen some? You, you, get, a, you get in these people's uh, presence, it's like, oh my, where'd you come from? Praise the Lord. Amen. And I'm not talking about, you know, we go up to the mountains and live like a monk and all that stuff, you know. But I'm talking about we need to become more spiritual in our walk with the Lord. We need to become spiritual men and women of God. A spiritual church. Amen? It's not, well, you know, uh, we just come uh, to just have fellowship all the time. I mean, you're getting the word here. In Lost and Found Ministries, you get the word here. You're being challenged how to live. To take it home. I tell the people... The, the real anointing, the real anointing, the power of God, is yes, it's here at the church and we receive, but the real anointing is when you go home and you apply it at home and things begin to happen at home. When things begin to change at home, that's the, where the anointing begins to flow. Amen? Hallelujah. You got, you got Proverbs? Okay. What did I say? Proverbs 20, 22. Yeah, Proverbs 22, please. Amen. And I want to I talk about just, just a few moments for, about persistent faith. Being persistent. 22, verse 29. Verse 29. And this is written by, by, song, uh, um, by Solomon, who was one of the wisest kings at his time. One of the, the blessed kings at his time. And you know, you, 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 you talk about, you think about Solomon, how he, he asked for wisdom. He asked God about, he didn't ask, well, God, give me wisdom. You notice that when, when, he, when he asked God, he said that I, that I can lead your people. Go back and read that. I think it's in, in 1 Samuel or 2 Samuel where, where the transition was beginning to happen. And uh, he, he, he goes to God and and. It's like, what do you want from me? God's telling Solomon. And he goes, I want wisdom so that I can lead your people. He didn't just say, give me wisdom. But he asked, he asked for wisdom to lead the people. Amen. I'm asking God for that. I mean, yes, all the time. I ask one time, but I'm at continually asking him, Lord, give me wisdom to lead the people. Give me wisdom that I may be an influence in the city of where I'm at. Amen. So look, at, look here at Proverbs twenty two twenty nine. He says, Do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before the unknown. Hallelujah. He who excels. That word excels, it means to be diligent. One who is diligent. One who is diligent. In his work. In his work. One who is active in his faith. One who is passionate about his walk with God. A, one who is dedicated. The one who is reliable. The one who is steadfast. The one who is ab abiding in this work or in this word. This one that is unwavering. And I tell my church all the time, it's, it's the one who excels, the one who's on the cutting edge. Amen? Say, I'm on the cutting edge. Amen? You are. You're here on Saturday morning, praise God. You want something. You, you want to improve your Christianity. Amen? I do. Praise God. It's one who's, who's unwavering. Do you see a man who excels, one who is aggressive in his walk with the Lord? 
The Bible says, Jesus said that the, that the, end, that the kingdom of God, what? Suffereth violence. And what? Who take it by force? The violent take it by force. We got to get aggressive in this thing called faith to take it seriously in these last days. Amen? Hallelujah. I wrote this saying down. If, if you want to get from where you are to where you want to go, you got to give yourself to what's in front of you today. If you want to get from where you're at right now to where you want to go, how many want to go somewhere? Amen. How many of you have got God's given you dreams? And some of these dreams may be uh, unattainable in the natural. Unattainable. But how many you know that all things are possible to those who believe? All things. So if you want to get to where you, where you want to go, you've got to start from where you're at today. You've got to begin to conquer what you're, what you're, what's in front of you today. Uh, there, there's one of my fathers in the faith, as, as Brother uh, uh, Samuel said, uh, Brother Copeland, uh, one of the fathers that I, that I follow and who's, who's one of my spiritual fathers is Dr. Mark, Bar Mark Barclay. He says here, he says, we must conquer today what's in front of us now to get to the dreams for that are for tomorrow. We are to conquer. We've got to conquer these areas in our life. And that's even being, being a, a servant in the house of God. That's being the best usher that can possibly, you, you can possibly be. That's being the best hostess that you can possibly be. That's why I love Pastor Trish, which we just, just kind of explain to, to, the, to the workers here, and just, you know, the, the, the leadership and what you're doing and, and, and to just give yourself to the people who are coming in here. It's the ministry of excellence. There's a ministry of excellence that each of us uh, have within us. There's an, excellence, there's an excellence in you and I. But it needs to be brought out. Do you see a man who excels in his work and he will stand before kings? He's not going to just stand for, in front of some ordinary man. But you will stand before kings. We're seeing this with Pastor, Pastor Elias and Trish. They're standing before people right now. Because God's seeing that they're excelling in the work. Hallelujah. How better can you get at what you do? Come on. How better can you get? Is it just, well, you know, we're just going to get by, you know? It's just, well, mediocre and, you know, we only got a few people and, you know... We started, we, you know, we're, we're a church to where a pastor even said, you can have a church of 50, 100 people and do mighty things, we were talking back there. Spend, my, spend thousands of dollars spreading the gospel with a little, little congregation. Amen? It's not really about numbers. I used to get caught up into that thing. <laughs> I used to feel not ashamed, but, you know, you'd be around pastors or pastors' meetings and you'd go and, well, how many are you running? You know, how, how many of you got in your church? And, and, you know, we were just starting and, you know, well, you know, you didn't really want to say to, oh, you know, I'm running this much. But, but we got powerful people. Now it's like, well, praise God, we, got, we have 30, we have 40 people. And, and, man, we are doing some damage in the kingdom of darkness. We're preaching the gospel. We're going places. Amen. We're getting known in the city. Praise God. So how better can you and I get? How better can you get in your home? How better can you be as a wife or a husband or a grandparent? Hallelujah. Yeah. How, be how, how better can you get? Or is it just, well, my husband's the way he is, my, my wife's the way she is, and well, I love Pastor, what Pastor said last night about the grace. Hallelujah. What are we doing? How better can we get at what we're doing now in our relationship with God? That's the ultimate. How better can we get in our, in our relation? And it's not about doing works. It's not about, well, if I read, my, like Pastor Sam said, it's not, if I read my Bible 20, 20 hours, God will love me more. God will be more pleased. And if I pray for an hour, three hours, God's going to be pleased with me. No. 
I mean, it's good for you, praise God. But it's really what's in our heart. How close are we getting to him? How, how, how far are we experiencing him? How much is our faith growing? Is, is God moving in, these midst of our, in the midst of my prayers and when I'm doing things? There are many believers not, a, not paying attention to life right now. Believers, they're not, what they're not, they're not pressing in to the things of God. They're not pressing in. They're just not paying attention. I mean, it's just, you know, I, I say this all the time at the church. You know, we, we come in to church with a casual attitude. Amen? That is past, you know, because past few three, three months or so, I was talking to Pastor Elias about this, you know, just challenging our church, challenging our church to, to get better at what we're doing. Get better. Not just, well, we got to do more, but it's just do, being better at what we do. Amen? And pressing into God. Because pressing in is where you get a hold of Him. You get a hold of God. You get a hold of, you, you get, you get a hold of your healing. You get a hold of your prosperity. You get a hold of your need being met. We need to press into what's in front of us right now. And Jesus is in the front of us right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As I said, you know, we, 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 we think the church, we come in casually at the, well, it's just church. Pastor, why are you always pressing us to come to church? You've got to be in church. It's just church. Why do you make a big deal about it? Is this a church? You know, the church down there, they let you do whatever you want to do over there. No, 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 no. We, we, it's casual attitude. It's, it's this idle thing. But church is for your growth. God gave the church for the believer. Amen? Church is for the believer. To bring the law, to get you equipped so you can bring other people in to get them a believer, get them equipped, and I guess thing this keeps going. You read in the book of Acts, the church was for the believers to come, to listen to the word, to fellowship with each other, to, to exalt God, and then to go out, bring others in. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Go, go over to the book of Luke real quick. The book of Luke chapter 4. I just want to give you two, two examples here and then we'll, we'll finish up. Luke 4. Luke 4, 24. And this, this is a story here. Luke 4, 24. And, and you, re, you read Luke 4 and it talks about, you know, Jesus was... Uh, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he, he, in verse 18, and, you know, he comes into the, into the town, and, and uh, he's preaching the word. Um, but look at verse 24, 24 with me. He says, and then he said, Surely I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up for three years, six months, and there was a great famine throughout all the land. So there, he's saying that there was many widows, many. He's talking about back in uh, uh, Kings about the prophet Elijah. You remember that story about the one widow? But the Bible says there was many widows, many. Everybody say many. There were many widows because there was war and their husbands got killed. And there was just a lot of widows going, uh, at that time. There was a famine in the land. And one widow got blessed. By the man of God, by the one who was the anointed one at that time was the man of God, Elijah. And look at verse 26. But none of them was Elijah sent except to Zarephath in the regions of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. 27. And many lepers, everybody say many. Okay, many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elijah the prophet and none of them was cleansed except. Naaman the Syrian. One. You know that story. When the prophet told him to go dump in the river. Remember? Seven times. But there was many, many people with leprosy. But only one man got healed because he pressed in. He dared to believe what the man of God told him to do. Amen? He told him what to do. He did complain about it, remember? 
He said, I don't want to go dumping these dirty old rivers. Let's go to the, to, what do you say, the, the Jordan River. They're cleaner. But at his word, I'll do it. That's key right there. We can go, but study that yourself. Go back to that. He said, at your word, I'll go and do it. And he, 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 he didn't go by, he went by the word of a servant girl. That was the servant. The prophet says, go do this. And how many of us, when the word of God tells us something to do, how many of us are actually doing it? We say, amen, yay, praise God in church. But when it comes down to love your, lo, uh, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. Amen, pastor. But when you go home, no, I can't do it. Wives, submit to your own husbands. Yes, amen. I can't submit to him. And this is, you know, this is where we're at. I tell you, one who excels in life, who is aggressive in his walk, will, will, be, will stand before kings. Go over to chapter 5 of Luke real quick. Let's look at one more here. Verse 17. Now it happened on a certain day, as he, Jesus, was, preach, was teaching, that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law, underline that, sitting by. They were just sitting, they were just kicking back, casual. We're just sitting back. We're going to hear this man of God. We're going to hear the word of the Lord. And see, that's why some people come to church to where they're just kicking back. We're going to sit back. They were sit, these were religious men who knew the law. Pharisees and teachers of the law just sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, Judea, and Jerusalem. And look at this. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Then behold, men brought a, a, a man on a bed. So we, we could look at this story. Jesus is there. The man of God is preaching. The preacher's there. Everybody say the preacher's there. The, spirit, the, 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 the healing was, the, the power of the Lord was there to heal. The pow, say the power was there. And now we're seeing that there was a multitude of people in this house. There was lots of people. So the preacher was there, the, the power was there to heal people, and the people were a packed out house. But nothing was happening. Nothing was happening. Nothing was happening in the midst of... The most anointed preacher there can possibly on planet earth. Jesus Christ himself was right there. The power of the Lord was there present to heal. And all the people were there. Man, now, there was this thing. It was just, the atmosphere was just there. Look at this. Verse 18. Then behold, men brought, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. But there was no room because the place was as packed out. Verse 19, and when they could not find how they might bring him in, because of the crowd, they went up on the housetop and led him down with his bed through the tilings into the midst of Je before Jesus. And when he saw their, what? Faith. He saw their faith. And he said to him, man, your sins are forgiven you. And he tells them to get up. The power was there, church. The preacher was there. The people were there. And it does not make that God will move in the midst. Just because you have the preacher here. Just because you have the power to heal here. And just because you have this place full, it's only when you and I press in to God and to come to get what we came for. Amen? Because I want to leave you with this, taking our faith seriously. Every time these church doors are open, prayer meeting, Bible study, whatever it may be, we come in this place to excel. To, to be aggressive, I, I'm coming to get something from God.
you do your work and you need to, you know, your ministry here, and you do, I don't care if it's, if it's teaching the children. If you prep and you, you're ready and you're teaching those children and they need a healing or a touch in their bodies and you're the one who's going to lay hands on them and a miracle happens in that back room, praise God. Because you're aggressive in your faith. Hallelujah. As I said, church, it's, it's, you, know, you can have the power here, you can have the preacher here, you can have all the people here, but that will not make God move. That will not make God move. It's by Him seeing your faith. It's about Him seeing my faith. Coming in here, I'm going to get healed today. I'm going to get, I'm going to get blessed today. I'm coming in this house. Amen. I'm going to go win some souls today. And the Bible says that he was made whole. Because when he saw their faith, when Jesus saw their faith, healing began to flow. The people had a part to play in all of this. See, we think we come in, well, God's going to do everything. Amen. I think that's what Pastor Mitz preached on last, a little bit last night. Just, you know, God's just going to do everything. No, he's not. You're, you, have a, you have a big part to play in this. Go back to the first scripture we went to is in that book of Luke, Luke 8, 18, 18, 8. Will he really find faith on the earth? Will he really find, are you what he's looking for when he comes? Man, I want God, I want, when God comes and looks at, down at me, oh, you're, you are what I'm looking for. Amen. I want him when he passes by abundant life or, or lost and found. I'm, I see faith here. Because when God begins, when God stops at your house, your personal house, or this house, He's just going to park, and, and so He can drop His goods, drop His goods down here, drop His stuff, drop His healings, drop everything that is that is pertaining in the kingdom for us, as as a body of believers. Proverbs at, at twenty two twenty nine. Who ex, who excels? One who is diligent, active in faith, passionate. Hallelujah, who is aggressive. And I see some aggressive people here this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So church, I leave that with you. Are we making it happen with God? Are you making it happen? It's not just Pastor Trish's and Pastor Lisa's job. It's not just all about them. They can tell you that, I mean, sure, from day one, it's not about me. But boy, every time we, you know, there's, we see it all over, and, and you know, praise God. Be careful what you watch on Christian TV. There's a lot of things. That, it's all about me. <laughs> Amen. It's all about me. It's all about me. But these, these, these two here, they're, they're the most humblest pastors that I know. Pastor Samuel and, and the men that, and I know the men that they run with too, or they, they, they fellowship with. They, they're, uh, they're men of faith, women of faith. And we need to take... They're leading by example. That's one thing I ask God all the time. Lord, keep me in a place of humbleness before you. Let me never get this big head that, that everything is about me or, or, you know, one of the brothers from our church, he said, he goes, Pastor, don't ever, I don't want to ever see your picture, your name on the front bulletin out, the, out, in, the, out in the front. Because <laughs> I'm leaving then. I go, you got it, brother. It ain't about me, it's about Jesus Christ. He's the head of the church. Amen, and we are his, we are his servants and his people. Hallelujah. So we're going to make it happen, church. We're going to make it happen in our, fa- in our lives. Amen. We're going to make it happen in our homes. We're going to make it happen here. Amen. We're going to get sharp at what we're doing. Amen. We're going to get sharp in what we're doing for God. Amen. Get sharp in our life as a believer. So that when you walk out these doors and they see you at Walmart and people see you there and they, wow, that's a believer. Man, that, there's something about you. There's something shining about you. Or your husband or your wife or your kids or grandkids. Wow, there's something different about you. And is it going to happen overnight? No, probably not. But it's, it's happening. And if we decide to today that, hey, I'm going to excel at this. I'm going to get better at this. Amen. Even though I don't feel like, I, because I get to. That's the awesome thing, is you don't have to. God's not making you. 
Pastor Elias, Trish ain't going to make you. You get to. You get to do this. You get to, be a, you get to a play a part in this. This is what gets me so excited is that God has chosen us a little backstreet church. We got a warehouse too, not as big as this. But uh, I, I, we started our home little fellowship we started renting a little space in another church and and we go back and i always look and i walk through the church i go praise god thank you jesus this is amazing <laughs> this is amazing why me god and it goes back because you love me amen because you love me hallelujah amen well glory to god close your bibles praise the lord amen thank you jesus why well, leave